chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke. That's in the New Testament, yeah? The third book in the New Testament scripture. The 13th chapter. We all God in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you for his goodness and mercy. Oh, yeah. oh for real, we got him when he's been good to us. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Thank God for each of you in your respective places. All our visitors who are with us today. We thank God for you as well. Praise the Lord. Amen. Luke, the 13th chapter. And I'm going to begin reading at uh, verse number 10. It says, uh, Luke 13 and 10, it says, and, uh, Behold, there was a woman which had, uh, I'm sorry, and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And uh, behold, there was a woman uh, which had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years and was bowed together and uh, could in no wise lift up herself. And uh, when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And uh, the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that uh, Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. Amen. And said unto the people, Now there are six days yeah. in which men are uh, to work, yeah. and them therefore come and be healed. Yeah. Uh -huh. And don't do it on the Sabbath day. Yeah. Oh. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou um, <laughs> hypocrite, do not uh, each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to water. And ought not this woman, being the daughter of Abraham, who Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day. And when he had said these things, his adversaries were ashamed. And all the people rejoice for all the glorious things that were done by him. Oh. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse 12 says, And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. I just want to talk about being made straight today. Amen. Oh, Amen. Yes. All right. Being made straight. <laughs> straight. You understand what that means? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Be fixed. Yes. Be right. Right. Operate the way it's designed to operate. Sometimes you have issues going on and somebody asks you about it and you, when you done fixed it, you just say, I got it straight. Oh, it's straight. Amen. Be straight. Very interesting text today that I think is just as important today as it was uh, when it took place. Uh, because it gives a demonstration of our worship houses and our worship service. And it gives an indication of what is lacking. It gives an indication of the mindset that we have when we come to the house of God. Amen. And some things are more evident than others. And all of us, I don't care who we are, whether we said, all of us got some kind of problems. Okay. And all of us come with some kind of issue. Right. And we got it so mixed up because uh, 
when we have issues, that's when we don't want to come. Amen. I've talked to folk who have said, I ain't left the church. I'm still a member. I'm just going through some stuff. And when I get myself together, I'm coming. And when folk tell me that, I don't hold my breath because if you can't get yourself in here, you sure ain't going to be able to get yourself out of here. Amen. Somebody. And there are all folk who, the more you know, if I don't look a certain way, I ain't doing it. Amen. Somebody. If I don't have nothing to wear, I ain't doing but you go everywhere else. Amen. It's, you don't have no set uniform that you have to wear. Amen. You can wear whatever you want to wear. Amen. And, 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 and we will make all types of excuses about going to the house of God. That's the first thing. And then some after we get that, it's still not evident exactly why we came. Y'all ain't saying that. You understand before you left home that some of us were going to be clapping our hands. Some of us were going to be singing time songs. Some of us might even dance. Y'all ain't saying that. And surely some of us are going to shout glory and hallelujah. And, and, and if that makes you uncomfortable, y'all ain't saying that. You, you really need to get straight. The idea is not just that we will come here to see what others are going to do. We got a good choir, but the choir can't sing you out of no foolishness. Y'all ain't saying that. We, we, we can preach pretty decent, but, but we can't preach you out of no foolishness. You got to want to come out of that yourself, and you got to seek God for yourself. Ain't no magic potion. Ain't nothing that we can do. We can lay hands, but if you don't have the faith, y'all ain't saying that. We can pray, but if you don't believe and trust God, that's not going to really do you no good. Amen. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Now, church, Bible said that Jesus asked his custom was when in the synagogue on the Sabbath. Now, let me remind you of something concerning the Jews and Jesus during that time. Even though he was the Son of God and he was God in the flesh, he was not over the synagogues. There were religious leaders, rulers of the synagogues, and there were uh, high priest of such that was in order before Jesus came and he never came to uproot or to destroy what was already in place. He conformed to somewhat to what was in place but all time they allowed him to teach in the synagogue. And if Jesus on this occasion was teaching in the synagogue, the Bible said in the midst of him teaching there was a woman that had a spirit, and listen to what it says, the woman had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. Now, interestingly enough, Luke, the author, the writer of this, uh, giving us this account, was a medical doctor himself. And if this had simply been something medical, he would have perhaps said, she had a bad disc. Y'all ain't saying that. Yeah. He would have said that something was wrong with her spine and caused her to be bent over and she could not walk. But that's not what I read. It said that the woman had a... Y'all looking at me? The woman had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. What, what otherwise, let me try to describe this another way. There was something entirely wrong mm -hmm. and manifest itself and it show up as something different on the outside. Y'all get this here. Sometimes what we're going through, how we're feeling, and what we have become is not because it's not really what you actually see. Y'all understand that? In other words, sometimes there are things that we bring upon ourselves. And when we bring things upon ourselves, God has to manifest it in a way that it becomes evident that there's something wrong. And what we're looking at and what's actually going on, a lot of times there's two different things. Y'all get this. I see families talking talking about their family is cursed and that might be so but you'll never break that curse until you internally realize that it can be broken and that God is the one who's able to break it. I don't care if my mama stayed in the project I don't have to live in the project I don't care what my daddy did I don't have to do what my daddy did I don't have to leave my children y'all ain't saying that because my daddy left his children I can be whatever There's more than meets the eye. Yes. And 
this is evident in this particular text because the writer, the doctor, the medical doctor, he could have given us an exact diagnosis as he did on many occasions. Yes. But he said the woman had an, a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. Amen. That's a long time to be in any condition. That, that, that's a long time to be bent over. It says she was bowed together. Uh -huh. and, uh, I ain't talking about no liberty hump. Amen, somebody. Amen. It says she was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. Uh -huh. I know folk who were bent over a little. You know, my daddy was a fence builder and Sometimes people ask me, was my dad at all? And I have to tell them, I don't know. <laughs> His back always was bent. I don't know. Maybe it was just so that when he did the next fence, he could already be halfway down there. I don't know. But his back was always bent. Amen. And he would never have no way to know how tall he was. Amen. But this woman had a spirit of infirmity. And it says, was, could in no wise lift up herself. Uh -huh. That's very important because you know, the, the, we're just talking about this woman so we could get a, a reference point, but right. the reality is all of us got something going on that we can't bring ourselves out of. We've got situations that we can in no wise fix ourselves. Some of us have just thrown our hands. Some of us have just given up. Some of us have just said, this is just how it is. Amen, somebody. But I'm not going to ever settle for this is just how it is or this is just how I am. As long as I know that how it is and how I am does not line up with the will of God. Amen. Somebody. Oh, the other way, I hear for, you know, sometimes women talk about I ain't married nobody, son. <laughs> and sometimes I interpret stuff different than other folk, but the Bible says that when the Lord created the man, he looked at the fool and said, it's not good that man should be alone. <laughs> so then he created uh, her, yeah, the woman. <laughs> and this is how I look at it. You probably don't look at it like that, and that's okay. We can still be friends. <laughs> it sounds kind of like when he made the man, he wasn't going to make one. Who in here? Amen. That's what it sounds like. He had created the man and he had created everything. And then he said that it's not good. Get quiet on me if you want. It's not good. For man to be alone. And to fix that, he created a woman. So if he created a woman for the purpose of marrying a man, how are you going to be in the will of God? Come on, I ain't married nobody. I don't need no man. He didn't say you needed a man. He said the man needed a woman. Sometimes we just say this is just how it's gonna be. Amen. This is just how it got to be. If I can't have it my way, I don't want it no way. You understand that? Some of us are just content with no real meaning for relationship with God without I, I wake up with some thank yous and I throw them out all in the middle of the night. I'm serious about this. I don't need no audience or no crowd to tell God thank you. I'm mindful of how good God has been to me. I, I throw out a hallelujah. I throw them out in the grocery store. Y'all ain't saying that. I, I, I'm just giving praise. Not because I can sing or not because I feel like I can praise him any better than anybody else, but I understand that I ain't going to be blessed from you praising him. That's going to come from me praising him. Say it again. Say it again. Here for Gary, we talk praise the Lord, blessings come down, and you said, What you think you're going to catch somebody else's blessing? <laughs> 
They don't, they, they, they direct it. God don't miss. He ain't gonna try to give me a blessing and make a mistake and give it to you. The woman had come to the synagogue to the worship, the place of worship. Uh -huh. yeah. And this gives us some, 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 some good insight as to the mindset of the woman. She had had it 18 years, but that didn't mean that she didn't use it as an excuse. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So we, we, were, we just got a different scale we use for church versus work. You understand? And if, if you don't go to work, I mean, you got to be able to not get out of bed. Y'all get this. And then when church time comes, you almost count up solid pre cough Y'all ain't saying that. It's time to get back in the bed and take a break because I'm, I'm, I'm feeling sick. I hear you, the church don't pay your bills. No, it don't, but it is God that gives us the power to obtain wealth. And, 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 and if God gave you a job, if God bless you and enable you to go on that job, he'll keep you at church too. You have to do a whole lot less at church than you're doing what God ain't saying. You come with through the work if you don't feel like working. She had a spirit of infirmity. In other words, she had something going on physically, but she had something going on spiritually as well. Amen. You know, I've told you, doctor told me some 20 some years ago that chronic pain causes depression. And I don't know, you know, I used to hear my mama say, I'm tired of taking this medicine. And I couldn't see what the big deal was. I just put it in your mouth and, and take it. But I see now. Y'all ain't saying Praise the Lord. I, I see it now because my mama left me everything she had. But the diabetes. Amen. <laughs> and sometimes when you're just hurting all the time, it can really be a drag when you just don't feel like that to hurt. You get one meeting feeling almost all right and the other go to acting up. And then sometimes it's just all do it at the same time. Y'all ain't saying, can't sit down too long, can't lay down too long, can't stand up too long. But just in pain, just in pain. Amen. 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 We'll tell everybody about it but God. We trust every doctor. Well, hopefully this doctor, y'all ain't saying that. When I see this doctor, hopefully he'll know something. Yeah. And we got a doctor. We talk about it. We preach about it. We sing about it and all the time. And, and nobody wants to really try him. Uh -huh. And trust him to heal what ails us. Yes, yes. The woman had the infirmity, but she still pressed away. To the congregation. Some folk, I, I, I've heard folk who have to use canes and walk and stuff, and I just don't go nowhere because I be shamed. I use two canes and two walkers if I want to go somewhere. Amen. And because you, you, you keep living, you may not need one today, but you don't know what you're going to need tomorrow. Y'all ain't saying that. And if I'm alive and good enough to use the cane or the walker, I'm blessed. Amen. You need to try to play young when you know you're old. Y'all ain't saying that. That's what old folks do. They get caved and walk. Nobody expected me to run no marathons now. Y'all ain't saying that. Disregarding what folks thought, she pressed her way. Now I'm of the persuasion that this wasn't her first worship service. Uh, but the Bible says that while Jesus was teaching, he said the woman could in no way lift herself up. Some of us are just like that as the old folk used to say, can't kill nothing and won't let them die. Y'all ain't saying that. Some of us are just like that. You know, they're, they're just, you get out of one thing and... <laughs> Here come two more. Huh? Some of us are just like that. You know, you know how something good happens and you get all excited and just get this automatic smile on your face and then for the day out something else happens. And sometimes it can be so small that you don't even remember what it was, but you know that something changed your mood. You know what I'm talking about? 
sometimes something can just come in and just kill and move, just kill you. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and, you, and you, you were sitting down just, just, just upset and just got this old mm feeling and don't even know why. I can't even remember what it was. Amen. So, just because things can happen. And, and, and sometimes when that happens, we just come so used to it and just come to accept it. I don't care what your condition is right now. It really, I'm in the Bible. It doesn't matter what doctors have said. It does not matter what your prognosis is. God can heal anything that he can heal anybody. He's still God. We just got to be who we supposed to be. Y'all understand? He still can heal, but somebody just got to trust him. The Bible says in his own hometown, he could not do many miracles because the people did not believe. Afterwards, his intent was to perform miracles. His intent was to heal folks, but nobody believed that he could heal them. And so when we the Jews are silent. To just coming in singing and saying amen and going back out. Yes. With no expectation that God will do anything. I feel like we're wasting our time. When you come in and only want to come in when you got to smile. Only want to come in when you think everything is going pretty good. Right. Yeah. The other way is putting your best face forward. You try to look like everything all right. Knowing that everything is all wrong. And as you in this church, try to look like everything is all right. Trying to cover up what's really wrong. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. You're missing an opportunity all right. to let the Lord see you like you are. All right. yes. Hallelujah. We'll offer altar prayer. And folk have to think about it. <laughs> uh, so, All right. Yeah. And, and, and I understand, but even when prayer is all for first off, you ought to be running. Y'all ain't saying. Yeah. And then second off, since the person praying is, is does not know what's going on with you, and you do, you ought to be already praying with them. Y'all ain't saying. You just in agreement with that prayer, but whatever your need is, you ought to be crying out. The woman was where Jesus could see her. I'm trying to teach, and it's trying to make me preach. Just bear with me. <laughs> Jesus saw her. Uh, otherwise, he saw her condition, what it means. I mean, everybody saw her. Jesus saw her and got off of what he was teaching. And see, that's a problem we have in church. We got order of service. And whenever we go different, straight from the order of service, folk always splinting and clinching and gritting their teeth and hunching one another because we didn't go by the order of service. And that's what troubles me in some places. You don't have no allowance for the Holy Spirit to come in. And I know it won't come in every time, but you all are expecting and inviting to come in sometime. You all want a period where we got to move. Maybe it don't say three songs, just like two. Maybe don't preach at all, but let the Spirit speak in our heart. I remember one time when I was trying to pass to the other church. And they had uh, and upset me real bad one Sunday. When the time came to preach, I got up and read the scripture and opened the door of the church and dismissed. And I reckon we were out of church by 11 to 11.45. <laughs> and 
Somebody said, Real Pastor, why you ain't preach? Why you why you let us go like that? That was the best thing to do, baby, because uh -oh. <laughs> I was young. Mm -hmm. uh, ain't no telling what I said. So I just trusted the Lord to speak to me. That's right. That's right. And sometimes we need to do that even when we're not That's mad. Right. Y'all ain't saying that. Right. Yep. If the Spirit come in the house, he speaks, amen. It don't come in just for us to dance and just for us to feel pews. It come in to speak to our heart, man. When he has spoken to our heart, he knows better what your heart needs than I'll ever know. Amen. But we come accustomed to the order of service. And it causes us To get thrown off track when something is not where it's supposed to be. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. They were accustomed, perhaps, to singing a few songs, listening to the priest teach, mm -hmm. and then going back home. Bible said, though, as Jesus was teaching, mm -hmm. he saw the woman, he said to her, you lose from your infirmity. Mm -hmm. And let me explain something else that although the woman had, as I said, uh, something <laughs> spiritual going on, uh, it had to show up as something physical right. so that when Jesus fixed it, you all understand? Yeah. Yeah. They would have a way to know that she had been fixed. Right. Right. You all understand that? Yeah. See, that's why I tell you all the time, some stuff that you're going through, it ain't for you, it's for somebody else. So in other words, the condition that the woman had, if she had not been bent over, perhaps nobody would have known that something was going on. But the way Luke writes it is indicative of the fact that something was going on besides her being bowed over. So when he says, woman, you're loose, and he touches her, and she straightens out, in other words, they saw something physical on the outside, but something fresh took place on the inside. You know, when the man, Jesus, was teaching on another occasion, and the Bible said that the house was full, not so much even standing room. Mm. And uh, when uh, these uh, four men brought their friend to Jesus and couldn't get in, the Bible said they went in and tore off the roof and came in through the roof. Right. And the book said that Jesus said to him, man, your sins are forgiven. Mm -hmm. And at that point, they began to accuse him of blasphemy, yeah. saying, who can forgive sin except God? Yeah. And, and Jesus said, uh, I, I, I told him that his sins were forgiven first so that uh, when I did what I'm going to do, you'll know who God is. Y'all ain't saying that. Right. The same God that forgives sins uh -huh. is also the God that heals. Amen. Right. So then he says, which one is easier, you think, for me to just say, man, your sins are forgiven, or for me to tell the man to take up his bed and walk? Either one of them is easier, but in other words, it's easier to prove that he got up and walked than it is that his sins are forgiven. But since the man couldn't walk there, and you told him to get up and he was able to walk, somebody ought to just believe that he's able to forgive sin and he's able to heal. Yes, man. Take up your hand and walk. Yes, sir. They might know that he's not just a talker, but he's able. Yes. You know, if you tally up your Sundays, that you've gone to worship. And think about what kind of experience it was. It's not that God don't want to come in. But he don't like to intrude. Y'all better get this. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's not that God yeah. don't want to hear you. Uh -huh. 
But he said, you have not because you have not. All right, all right. It's not that God don't want to speak to you. But he said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because they that would come to him must come, uh, must first believe that he is God. And that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek after him. Did I say he reward those that go to church sometimes? Did he even say he reward, reward those that preach or sing? But it said he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek after him. You ought to be made up your mind before you get here. That uh, whatever everybody else do, I'm going to seek the Lord. You know, I had somebody that tell me that they're very observant. Yes, sir. And that they see everything that go on in church. <laughs> well, you, 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 you may do well if somebody needed a detective. Y'all ain't sorry. But I don't come here to see what's going on. You know, some folk ask me sometimes, did you see that baby cutting up or that person doing this or that? And when I'm preaching, I don't see what nobody's doing. Right. Yeah, because I'm trying to be connected with the power yeah. that's all of us. Right. Because even if you don't seek him, I'm seeking him fire. Yeah. But we got to make in our mind before we leave the house. Yeah. That can't nobody warm you up from zero. Y'all yeah. ain't saying that. Yeah. If you don't work all week long and ain't thought about God. Yeah. If you've gone all week long yeah. and have told God, thank you. Yeah. You know, you might have told to be thinking somebody can warm you up. Yeah. And I don't want to jump start you and use all my power. Y'all ain't saying that. You are there early in the morning. Tell God, thank you. you know, I, I'm not talking about after your first cup of coffee. But you ought to get up in the morning and tell God, thank you. And uh, not just on Sunday morning, but particularly on your way to worship service. You ought to already be the warm up. You ought to, you ought to already be the inviting the presence of the Lord in the sanctuary. I'm not talking about I hope they sang good. I hope they sang this song. I don't care if you sang Mary Had a Little Lamb. Y'all ain't saying that. A Michael wrote the bowl of show. Cause while he wrote the bowl, I wanna feel Jesus. Come on, preacher. Preach. The woman couldn't lose herself. Could have lived up herself. Yeah. Anybody been there? Not necessarily physically, but couldn't lift, lift yourself up. Yeah. You know, so much going on. See, you know that if you could get to the house of God, you'll feel better. Yeah. But you don't feel like getting dressed either. Y'all ain't saying that. Don't feel like talking to nobody. Don't, don't feel like looking at nobody. The phone ring, you see the call ID. Ain't nothing wrong between you and the person. You just don't want to talk. You can't lift yourself up. You can't fix this condition. That's where the woman found herself. But Jesus was in the house. Yeah. And if you can get him down, shut. He can fix whatever ails you. Yeah. The Bible said that uh, he said he said to the woman, come here. Mm -hmm. And he said to her, your infirmities are you loose from your infirmity. That means something had a bound or chain. <laughs> something that you can't shake off. You understand, like you've been sick before, but this is different. Because yeah. normally you can just take this or that and yeah. everything all right. Y'all ain't saying that. You know, some headaches you can take a BC or good. Yeah, but then there are some of them that don't nothing hit. Y'all ain't saying that. There's some time that you just get on the slump and can't nobody pull you out of the slump. 
you know, folk will start coming around you and saying you just not yourself no more. And I don't care what nobody tell you about how you try to come out. The law is able to bring you out. Now the fact that nobody seeks him and nobody tries to come out, y'all ain't saying that. That's not God's fault. That's our fault. Because if you know he's a healer and you know this is his house and this is the place that's consecrated, this is the place where he said he would meet us at.
somebody came and said to the disciple, we want to see Jesus. I don't know about you, but I've been through some stuff. And I need to see Jesus. I need to feel his presence. I need to feel a touch from him. You got to believe he's able. Bible said when he laid his hands on her, yes, sir. immediately yeah, she was made straight. Yeah. How I know she was made straight? Mm -hmm. Not just because she stood up straight, yeah. but because she glorified God. Yeah. He, didn't get, uh, shut. he didn't just fix the physical problem. Hallelujah. But he fixed the spiritual problem. Yeah. And if you got a spiritual problem, sometimes it manifests uh -huh. and it come, uh, appears to be a physical problem. Because God got to get do something. Y'all ain't saying that to get our attention. And thank God that he's a count God. But sometimes he don't let something actually be wrong with you. He just let the feel say it is. Y'all ain't saying that. You've been there having to, when the doctor had to call you in and say, I think you might have this or you might have that. You understand, God wasn't trying to punish you. He wasn't trying to hurt you or kill you. But at least sometimes that'll make us find our way to the church. Sometimes it'll make us find our way to the altar. Sometimes it'll make us pray like we never prayed before. Sometimes, even when we find out it was just a false alarm, when the doctor retests us and uh, we find out that we don't have cancer, you don't have leukemia, you don't have lupus, instead of going back to doing that, what you were doing that, you ought to glorify God. Somebody ought to tell God, I've been healed, I've been delivered, and I've been set free. Did y'all get what I said that night? Yes, sir. 
Uh -huh. He was annoyed or he was angry because of something that he did in unfair. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Yeah, don't fool yourself. When you testify about what God has done for you, yeah. it's always somebody critiquing the testimony. It's always somebody who's saying, you think you sell. Y'all better get this. Now, he may not say it to your face, yeah. but it's always somebody who got something to say when God is blessing you. Y'all ain't saying yeah. But when God bless them, uh -huh. you better get this. They call in every number that they can think of. Yeah. Trying to tell it time. You see, I remember a boy I used to work with that got a new truck one time and it was pouring down the rain and he come over there and somebody come see my new truck. <laughs> Now, you gonna keep it? Time wise, we won't. Yeah, not to shout with us when we blessed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Come on. Right. And then when other folks get down to deliverance of their blessing, mm -hmm. we can't be happy for them. Yeah. Yes. You can tell me about it, I'm happy for you. Amen. You know what I'm saying? I love to see God bless other That's folks. Right. Because it makes me know he's still in the blessing yeah. yeah. I love to see somebody else get delivered. Because it makes me know he's still in the delivering business. Whatever he did for you, I know he's able to do it for me. God ain't never ran out of nothing. Y'all ain't saying that. God ain't never ran out of nothing. And whatever he gave you, I promise he didn't give you the last of it. Whatever he done for you, I know he'll do for me. They don't say it no more. They used to say it's no secret what God can do. Ah, what he done for others. The same thing for you. The rule I got to talk about now. The rule of the synagogue answered with indignation. Uh -huh. Look what it says. Don't coach it, Bible. You know how I read it. It says because that Jesus has healed on the Sabbath day. Yes, sir. Now listen. If you need a healing, uh -huh. I mean, you, I ain't talking about you got a little cough or a little headache. Uh -huh. But if you need a real healing, it, it really don't matter what day you get it on, does it? Just do it now. All right. Sometimes my knee hurts so bad, I just cut it off. Hey. <laughs> he moved with indignation because Jesus healed on the seventh day. He said, uh, but listen to what he said. And he said to the people. <laughs> he was mad at Jesus, but he, he spoke to the people. He was trying to decide. What y'all call that showing thing? He trying to, uh, he trying to uh, throw off on Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. Said to the people. I mean, this really is something you, if you weren't going to say nothing to Jesus, you really ain't, it, it, it didn't matter to the people, because like I said, you need a healing, you don't care what day it is. Amen. But in his defense, of the fourth commandment, yes. takes them to, out of the Sabbath day. Yes, you know, with all the commandments, the Jews had come up with certain commandments, and, uh, Provisions and conditions and limitations concerning the commandment. Mm -hmm. So they had some stuff that they deemed that was appropriate on the seventh day. Right. Uh, and uh, it, they allowed emergency healings on the Sabbath. You understand? Yeah. Uh -huh. if, if, if you had uh, cut your foot open, yeah. you understand and needed the, some healing the doctor could do that on the Sabbath. Not that if you had some of a stroke or a heart attack, uh -huh. the doctor could do something about it on the Sabbath because that would be considered as an emergency. Right. But uh, if you had something that was chronic, mm -hmm. 
You understand that in the case of this woman, something that's been going on uh, for 18 years. Their idea was that uh, that could wait. So the point he makes is that there are six days that uh, you are able to work. And uh, he says to the people, therefore come and be healed, not on the Sabbath day. Uh, he said there are six days in which men ought to work. Uh, in them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath. It is something that... Uh, the day we use as seven days, the doctor's office is closed. But the truth is that's not a bad thing. Because this doctor's office is open. Y'all ain't said that. And if you've gone to the doctor for 18 years, and the doctor couldn't do nothing about your condition, don't you tell me that when I get to the house of God, that I shouldn't be able to seek him. Don't tell me that I shouldn't expect God to heal me when I come to the house of God. Why, I know that he's able. And if you would trust him and seek him, he's able to make you straight. Ooh, ooh, whatever it is, he's able, I said, to make you straight. You might simply be thinking about physical. You may be saying, I feel fabulous for my age. Y'all ain't saying that. You may be saying, ain't nothing really wrong with me. Maybe that's true on the outside. Maybe folks still whispering at you. Maybe folks still trying to holler at you. Y'all ain't saying that. But there's something going on on the inside. And it really doesn't matter how the outside looks. Praise the Lord, you talk, at least I can. 
This ain't the way it needs our change. I didn't come here to hold a seat on the pew. You understand that? I didn't come just to hear the choir. I hope the choir sang good, but I didn't come just to hear the choir sing. I didn't come just to hear somebody preach or pray. But I came seeking Jesus. And a woman came not far a healing. But she was healed. And the ruler of the synagogue. I would have been glad so I could go and boast and say something took place in our church. You know, I'd be glad to boast about the fact that somebody came in humped over. And when the law came through, he set them straight. Y'all ain't saying that. I'd much rather brag about that than talk about how good the choir sang or how good my ushers were doing. I'd really rather be able Somebody, I had somebody who came in, stumbled in, drunk, and the law sobered them up and cleaned them up. I'd rather tell somebody that somebody came in addicted to drugs, but the law stopped out and delivered them. But somebody got a woman delivered, somebody got a woman healed, somebody got a woman Listen, I don't care if BJ preach and somebody gets saved. I'm just glad somebody got saved. Y'all better get this. Ain't no jealousy. There ain't no room for jealousy. I'm not just up here because I'm the pastor or because I think I can preach. But I want somebody to get over with Jesus. I want somebody to recognize that he's real. We all have to be glad when the Lord moves in our service. When I used to preach revival at my uncle's church in Mobile, and I've seen many other churches, whenever I get through preaching, they'll extend an invitation for one and a half minutes then, when they say you may be seated, a lady come up and get a financial report. That's troublesome to me. Because although it takes finances to operate, that's not the most important report. The best report you can get in here is somebody got saved. Somebody got delivered. Somebody got set free. Now, oh, you ought to look for your healing. Don't settle for where you are right now. Cause you broke the day. Don't mean you gotta be broke tomorrow. Cause you broke up the day. Don't mean you gotta be broke up tomorrow. God is able to affect the change. He's able to move on you yeah, like never before. I don't have a problem if you don't trust the medical. I don't have a problem if you don't trust the preacher. I don't have a problem if you don't trust the counselor. But God is uh, worthy of your trust. You can trust him. You can call him.
when my boy go to jail. Y'all know what's up? But when they boy go to jail, act like we all about to say that. A hypocrite is somebody who will hold you to one stamina and they be about another stamina. Jesus called him a hypocrite. The truth is that he can talk about healing, but he wasn't able to heal. Jesus can talk about healing, and he was able to heal. Won't 
people off and you give, keep giving when they go to work, keep giving them a check for a year. And if they can't make it then, don't worry about it. We don't get support to take care of somebody who ain't trying to do nothing. And then when folks try, you know the ones who got tired and go to their home, and they're not people that don't go to work. They go to work, but when they pay for somewhere to stay, y'all ain't saying that. They don't get enough to buy no food. We got these members and these members that say, if you make this amount, you can't get nothing. That's not how some of us need deliverance even from this system.
trying not to holler no more. But listen, when he said, you hypocrites, you go and water your eyes to your ass. Now look at verse 16 on the way out. Ought not this woman. What is that? Ought not this woman. He gave the high priest. He gave the, he gave the ruler of the synagogue his own word. <laughs> That artwork came right back then. He said, all the men ought to work on six days. And Jesus said, oh, not, y'all better get this. Oh, not this woman. You know, a human being. Being a daughter of Abraham. Not just a daughter of Adam, but a daughter of Abraham. Part of the Abrahamic covenant. In other words, should not this woman, the woman of the faith come. The woman should not this woman. First of all, I flunked science, but I believe that if an ox or ass go a day without water, they can still live. Y'all listen. I'm, I'm just guessing that. I got, I, I'm no Gerald and Reverend now. I know I got two of them a bit of the red. But you see the need for an ox or ass. Some of us. I'm more concerned. I got charged. You'd be surprised the stuff that folk bring to me and charge me with telling me about how ushers all to do. I don't care how they do. Y'all ain't saying that. My focus ain't on the ushers. My focus ain't on who make the right move. My focus is not on what somebody is doing. I want to see you. I want to see somebody deliver. No matter what we've been taught. Yeah. Come on. People should be walking in when you're preaching and praying. That's what they need. What you you if you walk in here, I ain't gonna quit preaching because you're walking in here. If you gotta go to the restroom, why don't people just go on in there? I'm gonna add a few minutes to it when you get back. But go on in there. Oh, not this woman. Listen what it said here. I'm too thrilled. It was so many times because I knew this. That's why I didn't tell y'all I was going to be short. I knew better. But it said, this woman, a daughter of Abraham, who saved her, have bound. Did y'all get that? Yes, sir. It, it's in red. That means Jesus said that. Jesus. Yes. I'm not this woman. First out the fact that it's a human. A woman, the other day, Trump said that women are special. <laughs> I'm not this woman. <laughs> I'm not this woman. Being a daughter of Abraham, who Satan have bound low. These, hey, look at this, 18 years. Should not she be loose from this barn on the Sabbath day? If not here, when? Right. Where? If not now, when? You hear me? If not here, where? If not now, when? They don't extend the invitation at the mall. They don't extend the invitation at the Golden Corral. They don't extend the invitation at the laundromat. If not now, when? believe that if you uh, ignore the invitation if you think I believe that you're going to get an invitation and work tomorrow and come to Christ you know where you are today girl. know where you're going to be tomorrow amen and said to him, when he had said these things, this is this, one more nugget, there's one more thing I need y'all to say. All right? When he had said these things, all of his, um, what's that word? All his adversaries 
The people who did think it was right. All of the people that were against him were ashamed. Now listen carefully at this. And if I thank you, God, that we can go. <laughs> when Jesus said these things, when he gave the justification, and he had to do this a number of times concerning the Sabbath. I remember when they accused him and his disciples because they were plucking corn off the side of the field and eating corn on the Sabbath. And Jesus simply told them, he the Lord of the Sabbath. And he said the Sabbath was not, uh, uh, man was not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made for man. But it says all of his adversaries. Now where were, where were they at? Where did this happen at? Oh Jesus, I'm going to have to start over. <laughs> Church, synagogue. This is where this happened at. Y'all get this? I, I don't make me re-preach any culture. I feel pretty good today. Don't make me do it. It happened in the synagogue, what we would call church today. Yeah. And it says all of his adversaries, who's adversaries? Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Lord, help us. All of Jesus' adversaries, they were in the church, in the house of worship, yeah. and he had adversaries. And not just were they against him, but they were against the one who could help them, the one who could deliver them, yeah. the one who could set them free. The uh -huh. devil's objective is for you to have adversaries. The devil's objective is for you to come in here with an adverse attitude. The devil's objective is for you to come in here and ignore God, ignore the people of God and make it all about you instead of it being about God. The devil's objective is to get you so caught up in people and this. You don't even expect God to do nothing. <laughs> we just come with the idea that when I get there, I'm going to say this song. <laughs> Some folk even come with the idea that. I'm going to set the preacher straight. Uh -huh. I told you about the church I used to try to pastor. They, if a little baby made a mistake and run across the pulpit, they just about have a heart attack. Y'all ain't saying that. But they had no problem cussing the preacher out. Uh -huh. <laughs> the pulpit was made for the preacher. Y'all right. ain't saying that. The preacher's supposed to be sacred, more so than the pulpit. The, yeah. the pulpit was built by some men hands. Y'all ain't saying that. And the chances are they were not holy men. Y'all ain't saying that. But some of us put more regard on the order of sacred. Put more regard on how we think stuff on the go. I got an idea how it all goes. Jesus don't show up, but I want him to show up. I want God to come in and move. I want him to touch somebody's attitude. I want him to touch somebody's spirit. I want him to Yeah, you so 
character. And I tell every preacher I talk to, I don't care who preaches in here, whether it's one of these preachers or a guest preacher. When he get up, I want him to preach that man. Mm -hmm. One time I was preaching my uncle's revival, and when he got up, the old folks didn't do anything but said, he just jumped up and said, this, he, he, he's supposed to preach better than me. He's younger than I am. <laughs> No one even said it. That's not my sentiment. So I don't care who it is. You come in here and preach. I, that's how to not get here is to not be able to preach. That's right. Because let me tell you something. We got all these new positions, doctors and apostles and all that. And the school can teach you how to be a doctor, but they can't teach you how to show Jesus. Y'all ain't saying that. It'll teach you how to hoop. It'll teach you how to lie to me. It'll teach you all of this stuff you want to know concerning the pastor, but it won't teach you how to get people delivered and set free. That ought to be the objective. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Not how to manipulate people and play with people's emotions. Yeah, right. You don't need me, you need Jesus. I need yeah. Jesus. Yeah. 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 The adversaries were ashamed. Yes, Lord. Don't hit that no more. I'm just going to ah. The adversaries were ashamed. And listen to what it said. All the people rejoice for all the glorious things that were done. By him. Yeah. Once we can put the adversaries to shame. Uh -huh. Once those of us who got him cannot be intimidated by those who don't have him. Yeah. Once those of us who got him, y'all ain't saying that, come on, can come out of our shell and not be ashamed. Yeah. yeah, we can put the adversary to shame. You know, sometimes I can sense the presence of the devil and he's so strong. Y'all ain't saying that. Until I have to tell him in the midst of what I'm doing to get out of here. I have to remind him that he's all bound. I have to remind him that he's all sound. I have to remind him that he's not welcome here. You, today is a good day. To, to let your hair down. To come to Jesus. Just as you are, it's a good day. To seek the Lord while he may be found. And call on him while he is near. It's a good day and a good time. It's never gone I live. And for God I die. The reason why I invite you to call the good things, the blessings and the benefits belong to the children. Did you hear what I said? The blessings, the benefits, and uh, the good things belong to the children. Come on, let's just get on stuff. Come on. The, the, the blessings and the good things and uh, the benefits belong to the children. Yes, God made.